All right, so we want to draw a box. IPC 144 loops. OK, let's say we are teaching loops. So we want to draw a box. So what we do, we create a function. Let's call it box. And we're going to have an int width for the box and an int height. OK? So how, we, how do we draw the box? We're going to write over here int i. And let's have a j over here. You are not allowed to do that, remember. Um, when you are writing your code, make sure you have one variable for every one type for every variable, like this. OK? Well, because I'm in rush, I'll do like this. All right? Remember. All right, so actually, thank you for reminding me. Pause. All right, so drawing a box, we're going to go for i set to 0, i less than width, right? So that's the width for the box, which width for the box, and i plus plus. Yeah, the height goes bigger. So width for the box, and I'm going to go, so I'm going to print one character. So we're going to go C out, something like that. We put an asterisk over here, OK? So that goes one line to the width, right? The width that I want to do. Then I'm going to go to new line. So now I drew the, the top one. Now I have to put the two sides and come down, right? There is one at the top, one at the bottom. So the two are there already. So the number that I have to go should be two less than what it is. So I'm going to have a for loop in here, j set to 0, j less than height. But this height is going to be minus 2, and then j plus plus. OK? Now in this one, what do I need to do? I need to put a dot at left, spaces a dot at right, correct? So I'm going to put a dot at left, see out that, uh, star over here, let's say, and uh, and then draw the thing. So for i set to 0, i less than, this one's going to be width. Um, i plus plus, and c out uh, space. And again, c out asterisk for the end, and go to new line. So that's going to draw the two sides coming down. And then we're going to bring this one down. Let's draw it and see what happens. It's got to be showing narrower because the, the asterisks are much closer than each other, uh, to each other at the side. How do we fix that? Um, oh, we'll see. I'll show it to you. So, Everybody's going to say, what the devil are you talking? Why, 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 are you, why are you drawing a box? We'll see. Um, so int main return 0. And I'm going to say box uh, 5 by, so it's five, uh, 10 width and 5 height, let's say. OK. And box say, I don't know, 5 width and 3 height, OK? So we draw this and see if it, no, actually, I forgot one thing. At the end, we have to go to new line. C out and L. So we draw this, and three years later, magic. <laughs> For some reason, that's coming out. Let's see what's going on. I did something wrong in here. What did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot to do minus 2 in here. I said minus 2, but I didn't do minus 2. OK, so one more time. There you go. Uh, the proper way of doing this is to print one space between each of these things so they get wider. So it actually, I think, makes more sense. Right? So essentially, uh, I put one over here, then spaces between one at the end. OK, so, so I'm going to put one over here. So it's going to be C out like that. OK, 
and it's going to be spaces in between and one at the end and it's going to be minus one because I just printed one right I think that's going to be okay let's see if it's going to work so did you notice that I changed the top one now I copied that and dropped it at the bottom one because bottom and top are the same right the top and bottom are the same so okay that's fixed but I didn't put the sides properly so let's do that so um, So it's going to be like that. And three. And like that. One more time. Man, it's not my day today. I need to go one more. So I don't know. Probably that's going to. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Good. Now it makes it kind of better. So I have two boxes created with different sizes and stuff like that. Are we okay with that? That's 40 years ago. 40 years ago, we have done this. We wanted two boxes, we wrote a function, and we called the function with different sizes, right? Ten years passed, structured programming went through, and this is what we have done. So box one dot zero one box dot cpp. <clears throat> now then we said, okay, this is this is ridiculous. We shouldn't do something like this. Like every single time I'm, I have to call the box function over and over. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna create a structure, we said. So I'm gonna create a structure and I'm gonna call it the box. And we're going to say that structure has two things. It has uh, a width, right? Why nobody told me that I did it wrong over there? Width and integer m height, right? Correct? We do it like this, and instead of having a box like that, we're going to actually pass the structure to this thing. So we're going to say over here, box B, and instead of having all these things, I'm going to say B dot width. B dot width dot width. And this is height, so it becomes B dot height. And then we're going to have, oh, M height. And then we're going to have B dot width. And B dot width again. Am I missing anything or I'm done? And now if I want two boxes, I'm going to say box, um, say A. And I'm going to say set to 10 and 5, right? I do it like this, width and height. And I'm going to have box B. And I'm going to set that one to 5 and 3. Correct? And now I can say box A and box B, right? So the results are the same. So when it comes, they're going to see the two boxes like that, which is fine. But the difference is that now I package the box into one thing, so I don't have to think about it so loosely. So whenever I say box, I know what comes with a box, right? It's much easier to understand. Yes? Yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. nothing. No, no, no difference. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Okay. Because it's C, I didn't do that because we don't have. Okay, so. So essentially, 
this actually was what happened. So if, uh, if we wanted to be very precise and good to not to pass the stuff or too many variables around, so it, it should have been struct box pointer and then go be arrow. Okay, but let's not lose the train of thought because that's not what the point I'm making. Okay, I don't want to write this garbage efficient. It's a bad thing to do now. I want to make the bad thing efficient. No, I don't want to do that. So, so it was just I was just making a point that that's how it happened. Now, the story is absolutely different. We talked about we talked about object orientation, and we said in object orientation we do not have a word like this. We talked about nightclub, said you want to go to a nightclub and dance. You don't have a booth called dance, and everybody who wants to dance goes to a booth and they start dancing, they come out, they, don't, they can't dance anymore. Okay, it's not like that. Everybody knows how to dance. You say dance, he dances himself. She dances that way, he dances. Anyone dances the way they do. So everybody knows how to dance. Bardot dance, Jack dance, John, Jack, Geo, and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's the difference that we have, that's the difference of that's the difference between object orientation and um, structured programming. Now, question that I have. What is a global variable? Can we access from any? Yeah. How do we just create a global variable? Do you remember it? You can say pass. There we go. How do we create a global variable in C? Define it outside any function, so every function can access. Fantastic. So we define it outside of the thing. So any function, there are two important things. First, we define it outside of the function. Therefore, all functions can actually access it, which is pretty cool. Can really all functions access? Yes. No, they can't. Only the functions existing in the same file can, right? So it's not really global. We call it global, but because we didn't know better, right? A global variable is essentially a variable that you define it somehow. There's a way to do it. So that variable becomes visible to all the things that you have, and everybody can use it. But why everybody's laughing? Everything's okay? All right, all right, they were looking at me and laughing. Seriously. Okay. All right, so, so, the, so the variable becomes global to all the things that we have in there. Now, we can do the same thing in C++, but in a better way. What we can do, we can make certain variables global only to certain functions and nothing else. You hear me? Creating certain variables global only to certain functions. For example, I can say box, and then I can say draw. So the function draw will have access to width and height directly. It doesn't need to have anything being passed to it or anything like that. You follow? Therefore, instead of saying box in here, I'm going to say draw. But wait a minute. How do I know that this draw belongs to box? I have to somehow tell to the compiler, hey, the draw that I'm writing over here is this draw. So this is the prototype for this. So I have to tie these two together. What you do, you put the name of the box, and you put a little, no, two X's, one, and you make a scope resolution in front of it. So you are essentially saying, this box is the same box that I have the prototype for it up there. Are we okay with this? Therefore, all the things that I was saying, b dot, b dot, I do not say it anymore. Because those variables inside my structure, which I'm not going to call it a structure anymore, 
I'm going to call it a class. All these variables, they are accessible by the function draw in that class. Are we okay with this? Now let's look at here. Instead of saying box draw, what I, box A, I can say A. Draw yourself. B, draw yourself. And I run it. The outcome is the same. One is piece of junk, the other one is an amazing thing. Okay? Why? Because I, I, I was telling you to, to the other class that first time that I got this, like, I, I self thought C++, at, the, at our time it wasn't, so it was something new, right? 35 years ago. And <clears throat> so I, I got this book and I learned C and it was like, wow, this is powerful. And when C++ came, I was reading the thing. I literally had tears in my eyes. This is an amazing thing. Just imagine, when I say encapsul encapsulation, maybe doesn't seem like something very amazing to you. But if you have tried to write a big, big application using a structured language, a big application, I'm not talking about like writing a thing that prints from 1 to 10. Like, I literally tried to write a... Uh, uh, a point of sale for a company with C. When this thing came through, the solution for that thing became one-tenth. And I did not have any bugs. Just imagine. Now, still, this is not good. Why? Because I'm changing the guts of A. You are saying you are doing that. <clears throat> Some idiot can come and do this without you knowing. So you set B to 5 and 3, right? Well, when they run it, they see 20 popped up. And suddenly, what the heck? It was supposed to be 3. Why is it like that? OK? You know who's that idiot? You, three weeks after you wrote the program. Because you forgot, and you just went over there, let me fix that thing. And by fixing that thing, you ruined 50 other things. So. The object orientation, all these methodologies, first it was spaghetti code, which means, like I'm talking about dinosaurs time, like when dinosaurs got, they ate too much, they died, and then the program escaped. And then, and then what happened is that they start writing a spaghetti code. What is a spaghetti code was that they had go-to statements, so they would write a code, then go to up, then would go to down, go to up, and then everything would become, the logic would become like, trying to find out where the spaghetti noodle is going in your thing. That's why they call it spaghetti code, OK? And then after that, say, no more go-tos. We just write functions. That's it. No more go-to, no more continues, no more breaks. We just, whenever we want repetition, we're going to do loops. And life became easier. And then after that, it came structured programming with, class, with uh, uh, structures and things like that. So they got closer and closer to organize themselves. So all these methodologies that we are putting, I believe it or not, when I just started studying C++, when I was reading the book, I didn't know English that well. So I was reading the damn thing. It was like security and privacy. I'm like, I thought that I can actually, because at the time, you wrote the code you didn't want anybody else to see. It wasn't open source like today. Like, you wrote a code, you kept it yourself, I would sell it and I would make money if everybody sees my source code. So I thought I can actually write a code, and when I make it private, no one else can see my source code. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that privacy essentially means that it prevents me to do stupid mistakes. And that's essentially what it is. It organizes your work. So the things that I'm about to mention that you have to do such and such and such and such and you have to do this and you got to say, why? It's going to work anyway. Listen to me. It's going to come and help you 10 years from now. Okay? Not 10 years. When are you going to Two years? Two years from now. Okay? So <clears throat> I don't want that. I don't want this M. Heitch might thingy happen. And I don't want this. What is this? Like, what? who does that? I don't want that. I want to be able to set this thing to the things that I want. Whenever I want, I want to set it. I want to be like this. I have no control over it. What if somebody puts over here 100 or 10,000 and they run the program? 
What's going to happen? What's the box going to look like? This is going to be my box. See, you don't know, but it's actually printing now. All the spaces. Oh, there you go. Here comes the bottom thing. So I don't want this garbage to happen to me. I want to, to be able to control. If somebody's setting it to something, I want that setting to be done properly. So how do I fix this problem? I can actually create another function. Instead of draw, I can actually create another function. I will call that function set. So void set. Now in that set, I'm going to say I'm going to get a width, and I'm going to get a height. OK? Not only that, I'm going to say, hey, this is private. Nobody touch it. These are public. You can access it if you want. And what happens? This happens. I can't go through back door anymore. If I am setting these things, it has to be done through my set command, through my set method. What good does that do to me? Let's take these off. Wow, what did I do? There we go. OK. So now I'm going to make my set. So I'm going to say void. Definitely belongs to box. And it's called set int width int height. And now I'm going to think, OK. The width of my screen is what? 80 characters. So I have to make sure when they're entering this thing, it is not more than 75, let's say, or 70. So I'm going to say if the width that is coming in is less than or equal to 70, and the width that I am receiving is greater than or equal, how can I, like, the biggest length that I can is two, I think I can be. Like two is the maximum thing that I can go, right? Two in length. So what do I think like, I don't know. Width of like I'm gonna say three. So it has to be minimum of three and maximum of 70 characters. If that is the case, then set my width to what I have. So now I'm gonna say M height. Uh, sorry, width is actually set, set to width. And else, in here, I'm going to do something. What? I don't know yet. OK? And I'm going to do the exact same thing for height. I'm going to say if, first of all, if this is right, I have to check the other one, right? Uh, anyways, forget it. If I'm going to say over here height, is less than or equal to, I have 20 in each, so let's say 20 characters, max, and height, huge, height, greater than or equal to, let's put three again. Now I'm going to actually set the height to the value. Otherwise, I'm going to do something. So now I can decide how the setting happens. You, can just, you can't just go wild and set the dimensions to whatever you want. It has to follow my business logic. You can't just do anything you want. You have to follow the rules exactly. Therefore, everything is going to work perfectly. I'm not going to have some cuckoo banana thingy happening. It's going to be always proper size so I can actually see it in my screen. Now, what happens if they actually set it to something? It has to be detectable. I need to be able to know something went wrong. I need to have some kind of a thing to know that somebody tried to set this thing badly and detect it so I can actually uh, mention it. That is, is called an empty state, which means you think of a state. It, you think of a situation in your class. You set up your class to something that you know what that is. And you always check for it to see if it happened or not. If it happened, it means somebody did something wrong at certain thing. Some people actually put error codes. They have some kind of an integer over there. They call it error code. Then 
those who have different types of settings and want to make sure if this go wrong, put error 50. If that goes on, 32. If this goes on, 95. OK? If you've worked, I don't know, with Submitter, that the program that I have written, it shows an error number and says something went wrong. It, early times, it used to do it all the time because lots of bugs were, were in there. Like th this error. So because there were so many different problems, that's what I did. I actually created an error number over there that when something went bad would go, students would tell me it was error number 20. Then I would go in my code, search for 20, and find out what went wrong. OK? So you, have to, you can have different types of empty states or error states or invalid states for your system. In our case, we can just set them to a negative value because it's impossible to have negative minus 32 for, for a lake. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to just write it over here. Anything I do, I name it. Anything I do becomes an action. So my code comments itself. It's self-explanatory, if I may say. So what I can do, in, instead of putting that minus one thingy, I'm going to actually create a, a member function, and I'm going to call it set empty. If I can type it, OK? And then in that set empty, I'll set it exactly to what I want it to be. So I'm going to say set empty. We'll set m height to m width, not that one. Sorry. I rarely type with my laptop thingy. It's too small for me, so that's why it's going so bad. I'm trying to kind of figure out what is where. Anyway, so, so I'm going to set it to minus 1, and da, da 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 I have set empty, right? Now, so in here, instead of actually do something thingy, if I, instead of thinking, OK, what do what, what I wanted to do? I'm not going to think of that. I'm just going to say set empty. That's it. So if anything goes wrong, I'm going to set it to empty. I know what's going on. Now, if I want to draw this, I have to check to see if it's empty or not before I draw it. If it's empty, I have to say it's an imbalanced box or it's it's been set improperly. How do I do that? I have to check to see if those are negative, right? No, I don't do that. I name it something. So I don't have to think about the logic. I don't know in which circumstance what class has what condition to be empty. Sometimes I have a name, and the size of the name to be 0 is empty. Sometimes I have an account, an account has to be negative to be empty. I have a car, license plate should be 0. Empty to be, so depending on what is empty, the logic is different, right? So instead of doing that, I'm going to actually create another action for it, and I'm going to say, okay, give me a Boolean. Is empty is going to be the one. And in my is empty, I'm going to say, if m Width is less than 0, or m height is less than 0, return true. It is empty. Otherwise, return false. Are we OK with this? So essentially, I can come to my code in here in draw. I can say, if this is not empty, draw the box. And I can even bring these integers in here. I don't need them to be there. Otherwise, I'm going to say invalid box dimensions. OK? So now, if I just say A and A and I don't set it to anything, I'm lucky. Why I'm lucky? Because garbage usually is a negative number. 
because garbage is usually a negative number, it says it's, it's invalid dimension. It's not going to print it. Unless I set it to a proper thing, unless I actually set over here, say, OK, I want my box A to be set to 10 and 10, and I want box B to be set to 5 and 5. Three years later, when I run it, they actually get printed properly. Yes? I added a member function. I called it is empty. Then I went into is empty and looked for the conditions I made to make it empty. And I used it. So if the conditions met, I will return true. Otherwise, I will return false. By the way, this code that you see is an automatic resubmission for many reasons. Number one, there are two return statements in a function. Very bad. You're not allowed to do that. Only one return statement for each function. Never, ever do that. Okay? If you have a situation like this, always create Boolean return or uh, empty. And I'm going to set it to false. Now I'm going to say, if this happens, empty is true. And instead of this nonsense, I'm going to say, return empty. OK? You only have one return statement, not two, not allowed. OK? Remember that. If you write such a code, they're going to say, this is an amazing student. He's really following the rules and regulations, but he's a rookie. It's obvious never the person wrote the program in, a, in his life, really, professionally. Because you're saying, if the condition is true, return true. Otherwise, return false. Why would you eat a sandwich like that? But you're saying, if it is true, return true. If it is false, return false. Why don't you just return the condition for heaven's sake? Done. Right? Just return the condition. If it's true, it's going to return true. If it's false, it's going to return false. You don't even need brackets over there. It's just. There you go. Yes. Pardon me? Uh, I didn't understand. Will it work if we? This, of course, it works. Well, this is perfect, actually. This means you understand what is the meaning of a conditional expression. It means you understand that the result of that thing is Boolean. It's true or false. And because you are returning true or false, you can return that value easily. OK? So this is a good way of writing. If you, don't, if you have trouble, do it the other way. It doesn't matter. As long as you don't have many return statements, I'm OK with it. But try to understand. <coughs> usually, not usually, you never check for a condition and then return true or false based on a condition. You simply return the condition. It doesn't make sense. OK? Um, you know what it looks like? It looks like you're telling me, if there is coffee in here, give me coffee. If it's tea in here, give me tea. Just give me the damn cup. Whatever it's in, I'm going to get it, right? It, that's the thing. It doesn't make like if you are, your, your purpose is to get this, then who cares what's, what's what, you know? All right. Yes. Oh, you mean not to have a function over the code? Just have, just instead of here, write the condition, right? What if I have another thing that I want to check to see if it's empty or not? What if I want to set to another box and I want to make sure that the box is not empty when I'm doing the copying? Why 
what if I want to write another thing in here that needs to know if box is empty or not? Again, I have to copy that condition to put it over there. Then I have to. There is an important, important rule that you have to always remember. Anything that you can name it, it has to be in a function. Anything that has a purpose, goal of its own, it has to be in a function, no matter how small. Always. Because... This is my question now, and I want your... Serious answer on this. You have no idea what my program is doing. Okay? If you see line number 21, do you know what the heck is this function doing? If you see number 20, what does it say? If not is empty, it's speaking in English to you. It's telling you if this is not empty, do that. This one says if M myth is less than there, or that one is like, whoa, 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 whoa. what does that even mean? Now I have to sit and interpret what that means. Try to use my brain cells for that. I don't want that. I want it to give me the message loud and clear so I can continue my work. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? This is putting the data and behavior together, ladies and gentlemen. And the fact that I can make something private so it cannot be reset in any, any, uh, any irregular way makes programming much easier and with less bugs. And that's a fact. Okay? So now we know what private is. Now we know what public is. From now on, I'm not going to call this thing a structure because we don't have a structure in C++. C++, it has a class. What is the difference between a structure and a class? Class, class is private by default. Structure is public by default. I put a private right at the beginning. It doesn't matter if I change that struct to a class. It's the exact same meaning with absolutely no difference. Are we okay with this? Yes. So the object purpose so we change private. It's is to be to to call the set fun, set function. Okay. There is no other way. Oh, because set is declared. Yes, because set <clears throat> set is the public property of box therefore accessible for others? When I say others, it means other code, other classes, other functions. M with an M, M height are in private property of box, therefore they are accessible only through things that are in box and nothing. So you can access the set, but only the way I want it. Remember that I gave you an example. Don't tell me it wasn't in this class. I always tell you it's about getting a change for like buying coffee. And I said, if I ask you to give me the change, you're fine. But if I put my hand in your pocket and pick up the change, it's going to be, did I tell you this? Yeah. It's the same thing. By that set, I am still giving you access to the height and width. I just want you to access it properly. That's all. So the box remains a box, a valid box. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, terminology. That thing, construct, is called a class. Class can hold data and behavior together. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to draw this properly, this is, create, this is putting the horizontal line, correct? So this is essentially, and if you look at it, these two are identical, right? This one and this one, right? Correct? So if I have something like this, it has to be in a function. So I am drawing a horizontal line in here, right? So I'm going to come over here. But this horizontal line is in the guts of my box. Nobody's supposed to tell to my box, draw a horizontal line. 
No, they are supposed to tell me draw, and when I'm drawing, I'm, I'm going to do a horizontal line. Because of that, if that's the case, if I want to create a function to make this simple, that should not be accessible to others. So if I'm doing a horizontal line, it has to be a private one. And only accessible by the functions of this class and no one else. So the, sorry, wrong button. So the, so the horizontal line of mine that is a member of box will essentially do this. OK? And it's going to have an integer i in here. Now, do I pass the width to it? No. See, my old, have your old habits die hard, they say. I passed a variable to it. No, I could just call it horizontal line because it already has access to width. And I never want to change the size. Why am I passing anything to it? Just draw a horizontal line, that's it. Right? I didn't need to pass anything to it. Now I'm going to come back over here. First of all, what is this thing? Did I miss anything? Did I miss a semicolon somewhere? Return type of what? Give me line number, please. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I deleted the bull. Thank you. All right, so in here, I'm going to say horizontal line. F, all right. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. OK, test it to see if it right. It works. It works perfectly. There you go. I have my box. And uh, this looks, uh, this is the, just the sides of the thing, right? So I'm going to put that one in sides. Sides. Void, box. Sides, and where is it? Come on, come on, sides. So this is what I want in here. So this is drawing the sides. And it's going to be an integer schmiggly dingy. I'm going to go over there. That looks fine to me. And in here, I only need to repeat that one. So I'm going to say print the sides. And I think I only need a J. So I don't need that one either. So it's going to be, right? I don't like that the way I named it. I would like to see top and bottom over here. Top line, bottom line. We could do that too. And I could call it top line, and I called it like, and I, like literally, like what you can do, you can create two empty functions that says top line and bottom line, and then call the horizontal line in it just to make it more descriptive. There is nothing bad with that. OK? But when we look at it now, it's drawing the box, and I have a couple of private functions over here that is uh, dealing with it properly. OK? So, th so there is this. Wrong perception that people have. They say, member variables are private, member functions are public. That's not the case. No. Oh, first of all, let's get, get over with some terminology, OK? In a class, we can have two different types of things. We can have member functions and member variables. When you say member variable, it means a variable that is within a class. 
if you read an object-oriented book, a member variable is called an attribute. So you can hear that a lot. Attribute of a class. Okay? Attribute of an object. You hear an app, attribute. So attribute is what you hear. So attribute, member variable, they're the same. Okay? Second thing. thing. <clears throat> member functions. Member functions are what uh, uh, are behaviors and actions of a class. Member functions. They are also called methods. So if you say class is method, it means class is member function. That's another thing that you need to know. So, and you're going to hear that from me a lot. Because I did object-oriented before C++. So that's why I remember. If I started with C++, it was like member functions and member variables. But because I studied object orientation first, that's why I know classes with methods and attributes. Okay? That's, it pops out. So if it pops out, just translate. Remember that. Okay? Now, there is another thing that you need to know over here. That is, there are certain actions that when they are taken, through those actions, the state of the object change. What does that mean? Can anybody tell me what does it mean, the state of the object change? What is the meaning of state of the object change? Oh, what is the difference between an object and a class? Oh, object is instance of a class. Object is an instance of a class. Amazing. So essentially, what we are saying is that if I actually look at Oh, I didn't do it. What's the time? 3.34. We have to 4.10, right? OK. Pardon me? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So let's have a break. It's actually more than two minutes. Let me like, like five, ten minutes, OK? Five, ten minutes break, and we'll come back and we continue, OK? I'm going to stop the recording, because when it goes to lock, it uh, clutters the recording. Please remind me to start recording again.